Hi, I'm Dr. Supano Chakrabarti. Um, I am a doctor of blood diseases or what you uh, call hematologist or hemato-oncologist. I started my career in um, this particular discipline uh, way back in uh, the early 90s. And uh, I am currently working at Dharamshila Narayana Hospital and heading the department of uh, hematology over here. Uh, today we'll be talking about one of the most uh, dreaded of the blood diseases which is uh, acute leukemia or what you popularly call uh, a blood cancer. Now blood cancers are, if I can uh, categorize in a very lay term, broadly of three types. One is leukemia, one is lymphoma, and the third is myeloma. So coming to leukemia, uh, the best way to explain it is, uh, I will put an analogy of a solid organ tumor. Let's talk of uh, something that we can visualize, like uh, breast cancer. So there is a lump in the breast and uh, the outcome of the disease or the breast cancer depends on how early have we diagnosed the disease, how big is the lump or the tumour and has it spread to the lymph nodes around it or it spread to more distant parts, means has it gone to the bone, has it gone to the brain, has it gone to the liver. And if it has, the outcome is very poor. If it has even grown in size beyond a certain limit, the outcome is very poor. Now, when you talk of blood cancer, it is the worst stage of breast cancer, means it's already all over the body. Yet, it is the most curable of all the cancers, particularly in children. So why are blood cancers or acute leukemia more curable than any of the solid cancers? Um, the answer to this pro uh, probably lies in the fact that uh, it is at the very outset all over the body and uh, there is no stage to blood cancer, you know. We don't stage blood cancer as in stage 1, 2, 3 or 4 um, because it's by definition stage 4 from the very beginning. So is it worse? No, the answer is not. Whether you diagnose it early or late, the curability of the disease depends on other factors. Now what are those factors? Those factors are what actually is happening within the cells. Now in solid tumors, we are just starting to understand the importance of what is happening within the cells or the genetic changes. And when you see that you find one or two such genetic changes, you can actually impact the disease. But uh, blood cancers, we have known it for the last 40 years that the primary event is the genetic change that's happening within the cells. And uh, these cells, because they are circulating all over the body, are much easy to target, whether with medicines or whether it's with immunotherapy. Acute leukemia arises from a mother cell or the blood stem cell. It can uh, arise at any stage of the differentiation of the cell and mostly in its more immature form. So it is broadly classified uh, for clinical purposes as a myeloid or a lymphoid, means whether it is coming from the uh, cells which lead to lymphocytes or it is arising from the cells which give rise to neutrophils, monocytes, red cells and these group of cells. Now based on that we call it more commonly as acute myeloid leukemia or AML or acute lymphoblastic leukemia or acute lymphoid leukemia as ALL. So this is a broad classification of acute leukemia and in the 1950s and 60s this was diagnosed largely based on what we were seeing under the microscope means what is the nature of the cell. How, how is it looking and based on that we used to call it whether it's a myeloid or a lymphoid. But we have moved a long way since then 
and we diagnose these cells based on the expression of antigens on the surface of the cells and based on that we can actually subclassify AMLs and ALLs into various different subtypes. Say for example acute myeloid leukemia. Now in acute myeloid leukemia based on how the cells look um, they used to be categorized as um, M1, M2 to M7. Now currently we call it acute myeloid leukemia with, without differentiation, with maturation, without maturation, myelomonocytic but more importantly what we do now is classify them based on the genetics it means what are the genetic changes within the cells there are some genetic changes which respond very well to treatment and there are some which do not respond well to treatment so it's classified as uh, you know good risk and bad risk and in between lies the intermediate risk so as you can understand that this is how we stage leukemia not by uh, the size of the cells not by where it has uh, presented itself but by what are the changes going on within the cells